I am well documented as an absolute Burt Reynolds fanatic. Me too. Love, yes, Miss yes, Terry Stacy. Really, everybody loves Burt Reynolds. And I have the privilege today of speaking uh, with a very, very nice man, an incredibly talented actor and writer and director, and uh, also uh, the author of a new book. It's called Because of Burt, and it is all about uh, a mutual hero, Burt Reynolds. And uh, as thrilled and as honored as I felt to have my opportunity to interact with Burt, Mark, I'm incredibly jealous because, my goodness, you had a wonderful wonderful friendship with him over the years and i'm so thrilled that you came in thank oh you so much gosh, thank you so much for having me i i love your enthusiasm i love your love for Bert and it means a lot to me. So Mark is from you're from here. You're an Indiana guy. Well, are you? Missouri originally, I'm right? From, yeah, I'm from Missouri originally, but yeah, I, I moved here uh, to Marion, Indiana, in 1994. Take me to the beginning because you had an opportunity to really be around Bert and work with Bert at a time in his career that was sort of an interesting transition for him because he was just coming off of the blockbuster hits of the early 80s. He had had an injury on the set of City Heat, and so he was really he was at a point where he was rebuilding. But throughout his career, and this is a theme that you really talk about in the book, is that he was all about giving back to people. He was about paying it forward and, and that everyone mattered. And so he had invested in his community there in his hometown with Jupiter, Florida, in this theater training institute. Right. And you had the good fortune to actually become an apprentice down there, which is an amazing accomplishment for folks who, who don't understand the number of people who wanted to be apprentices at that school and at that theater. And you managed to what? One of uh, 12 people that were picked? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it was kind of like in the height of his career, he builds this dinner theater down there and he wanted to give like 11 or 12 apprentices a year that would learn um, the trade through Carol Burnett and Dom DeLuise and Charles Nelson Riley, but he wanted to give you the highs and lows. And so it was kind of like American Idol meets Survivor, <laughs> you know, because we had, you know, we we would get paid uh, like $100 a week, uh-huh. but... Um, and this is like 1986. It was 1986. So even yeah. back then, that's not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, but it was, it was like still, I'm going to a school uh-huh. and I'm getting paid to go to a school. And at the end of the year, I'm going to become an equity actor, mm-hmm. but it was all because of Burt Reynolds. And and so that he would truly give us the highs and lows. I remember the first night we were there, I'm in the box in his, in his personal box with mm-hmm. our team and we're in suits and ties and dresses and we're eating and watching a show and being treated like a million dollars. And the next day, we were at the city dump. Yeah. You know, <laughs> taking down the set and there's buzzards flying over us. I'm going, oh my Lord, what, are we, what did we just do? That is so in the, awesome. Yeah. In the Florida weather too. Yeah. Oh, it was sweltering, you know, and we're just, and, and, you know, then, then he'd go, hey, you're going to go on my yacht. We go, what? Wow. And we're, we're on his yacht. And then it's like, hey, go clean Dom DeLuise's toilet. Wow. <laughs> and it was truly the high and low of Hollywood. Can you take it? Because uh-huh. you can't get out. Yeah. But if you can, this is a safe place to learn and see what you're in for. And you're working with legends and being trained by people like Charles Nelson Riley. Yes. I mean, what is that like to be around these icons and have them speaking encouragement into you and helping you hone your craft? You, you, you just you, you literally can't believe it. I mean, you know, you you know how blessed you are because these people have made it on Broadway and Hollywood. I think Charles Nelson Riley is one of those great people who are completely underestimated Mm. as we saw him as the funny guy on match game, but he, he was won Tony awards on Broadway. You know, he was a Tony award nominated director. So, you know, to be able to be directed by him and have him as our master teacher, it was extraordinary. So the apprenticeship comes to an end. Yes. And you are basically sent out into uh, into the vicious world of Hollywood. That's right. To pursue your career. The transition, you know, having gone through that experience of you, you risk everything and you have this dream. And then as you are driving out to Los Angeles, you get closer and closer. For me, I remember reaching the uh, the desert and hitting Las Vegas and the sun was just coming up right. and being terrified and thinking, I have no idea where I'm going to be in a year. Right. And the fear that comes into you that makes you want to turn the car back around. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So my I because of Bert, I met my wife at, at his dinner theater, right? She right. was a waitress. So, you know, we dated for only two months and decided to get married and didn't even take a honeymoon and drove out to LA. And the whole way there, I'm convincing her everything's gonna be okay uh-huh. until I saw all those lights. And I go, we gotta go back. And she wouldn't let me go back. 
And I'm telling you, if she didn't say, we're not going back, I would have been back. <laughs> you know, so God bless her for uh, making us do it. Absolutely. And uh, that's a really neat story that we've been married 32 years, but we met because of Bert. Speaking with Mark Fazer, he's the author of a brand new book called Because of Bert. You can find it right there on Amazon.com. A lot of people had that kind of a personal connection with Bert Reynolds. And I wonder how much of that was because we grew up with him and how much of it was that he was always out there in the public he was um so good to his fans but he also was very honest about his personal life and his struggles and his triumphs and um i i think that people could relate to that i know i certainly did yeah I, listen you're, you're so right um i was one of many because of Bert's stories but i think when Bert was with you he was present yes. and you were the most important person at that time yeah and everybody felt that connection it wasn't some facade or fake thing he really made everybody feel and that that's why you know when you write something like that you have to make sure that you don't take ownership like no no he was closer to me than anybody else because it would offend a lot of people mm -hmm. and and the fact is is I was really, really close with him. Yes. But I wasn't the closest because whoever was with him was the closest. Well, and when you got to uh, to Hollywood, like everyone, you, you have those early struggles and then you start to, to make some progress as a result of, of connections through the school and through the theater. Right. And eventually, uh, you know, you get an opportunity to actually reconnect with Bert and, uh, and you wind up on his series Evening Shade. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, <laughs> you are... You remind me a lot of myself because you're very enthusiastic and you love Burt Reynolds. Well, I did too, probably more than any of my other fellow teammates. Yeah. But that whole year, I didn't think he knew my name. Yeah. And I, I would be like, I don't understand it. Doesn't he understand how much I love Burt Reynolds? Uh -huh. And he was always kind, but he just never said my name. Yeah. And so I felt like a relief pitcher is all I got to do is be disciplined and keep working. And maybe one day I'll get that call. Cause I, I saw Bert hire so many apprentices, not only in my class, but before and after. Yeah. And so, you know, you don't, you don't understand it, but it's really not your place to understand. Just do the work like yeah. Charles Nelson Riley said. So then one day I got that call and said, he liked Bert would like me to audition for evening shade as an actor. And so I did. And I was lucky to get the part. Yeah. And you wound up having a, a long-term relationship with the show and, and developing a, a relationship with Bert. You had worked as a production assistant. You were an actor on the program. Yep. You worked as Bert Reynolds assistant and also uh, actually had the opportunity to write some episodes as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, First of all, I, I was so lucky to act on the show four times, but then he asked me to be his personal assistant. And then, so for two years, I'm his right-hand man. That's so awesome. And, yes, yes what, I what agree. It was so what an unbelievable job. Was it, who, who, what lady did he have in his life at that time? Uh, well, he had Lonnie at that yeah. time. Was it Lonnie? Well, yes. Well, and you know, one of the things that is really uh, unique and so special about this book, Mark, is that you paint such a loving picture of Bert, mm -hmm. but also I think a, a very, um, I think you paint a, a very honest and, and whole uh, picture of, of who he was. And it's just, it's written with such integrity. But there you are uh, working as his personal assistant, which is something where you're really uh, in there and, and you're taking care of his needs. But what impressed me about you uh, working with him was that you also, somewhere, even though you're working with this legend and uh, so much of your career at that point in time is, is invested in projects connected to Bert, you still had the courage to speak truth into him when he was going through periods of struggle, despite the fact that he was surrounded by a lot of people who weren't willing to do that. You're so right. Uh, that, that, that is what, what I feared when I learned about stardom, of how dangerous it is, is, is that my feeling is, is I genuinely loved him. And if I wasn't going to speak truth to him, I wouldn't be the person. I would want that reciprocated to me. Yes. I would want someone who loved me to tell me the truth. And it hurts to hear the truth. Yeah. When my wife tells me the truth, it hurts, but it makes it better. You yeah. know, like she was one of the proofreaders of the book and say, you can't say that. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't. No, you, you, you know, get a little upset, but you know, thank God that someone's willing to stand up and fight for you. And that, I felt that was my responsibility mm. um, because I really loved him and I really cared about him. And I knew I'd be there after it was all done. Yeah. Whether I was not in it 
for what he could give me, I was in it because I genuinely loved him and he already gave me enough. Yeah. And it's ironic that the more I gave him from my heart, the more he would give me anyway, because that's just who he was. He really recognized that in people. And, you know, he did have a, a heart for for people. When I read the book uh, initially and, and I just uh, read the the. Um, uh, the description of it on Amazon. I was thrilled because I'd always wanted to conduct an interview with Bert and focus on the fact that he had not only established and built a lot of careers, but resurrected careers. He he helped people sustain themselves yep. when they were going through down periods. And you know, we have talked off the air about Sally Field. You know, Sally Field. I a, love Sally Field. Yeah, and, and a phenomenal, <laughs> a phenomenally talented actress. But yes. at the time, you know, she she had done some. Uh, some interesting work and was starting to come into her own but it wasn't until burt reynolds picked her out of a, a relative obscurity from the television world and right. said i want you to star with me in Smokey and the bandit that that really launched her into the stratosphere you're absolutely yes see look you think about it back then there was really a lot of labels mm. it was you're either a television star you're either a theater star or you're a movie star and the movie star was the apex of of, of it all, mm. and she was she did the what was it the Helen Keller? Um, yes, uh, uh, did the um, oh uh, shoot yeah where she was playing the multiple personalities. Sybil, Sybil, Sybil. Yeah, Sybil. Well, okay, yeah. Terry. But she was she was nominated for uh, in, or she won an Emmy. Mm. Okay, but that was going to give her her television stardom. Yeah. You know, she she was once a flying nun, and you get labeled as that. Gidget. And she in Gidget, <laughs> yeah. and, and because she's so talented, she fought her way out and, and got the made for TV movie. Mm. But there's a huge difference, particularly back then, to do a made for TV movie in a major movie. Yeah. And she would have never done those movies had it not been for Burt Reynolds. Did Burt ever share with you anything about his his relationship with Sally? Yeah, oh, he did share a lot. I mean, he he. He, he took responsibility for that relationship. I yeah. mean, you know, again, I, I couldn't believe that I would sit down and talk to him about various starlets and, and people, mm -hmm. and he would be so candid and honest about his relationships. And, and one of the things I talk about in the book is how he would, those relationships would end. You never read about him in the tabloids or anything like that. It always seemed like to be this mutual respect. Yeah. So that's why it's odd that Sally Field this many years later is writing her book and saying not so nice things about him. Yeah. Um, when he has always privately and publicly spoken extremely highly of her, as well as Dinah Shore and Chris Everett. I yes. forgot about Dinah Shore and Chris Everett. Yeah, yeah, and Farrah Fawcett. Speaking with Mark Fowler, he's the author of Because of Burt, a new book about Burt Reynolds. You can find it at Amazon.com. You're with Burt during the, the period with Lonnie. Oh, I was right in there. And, and um, I, again, we talk about it in the book, but, you know, something, everything seemed great. You know, mm. I, I'd go to their house. In fact, I talk about one time I'm at their house and she walks downstairs and goes, hi, Mark. And I turn around, she's in her bikini and high heels. Like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, but, you know, something went awry. Yeah. And all I can tell you is how how he was planning on breaking up with her, mm -hmm. I was not a fan of. And I talk about it in the book. I, I, I felt like that was not Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Burt Reynolds was the classy guy. He was not the guy who's going to do that. So I try mm -hmm. to encourage him to produce a series for her. Yeah. And then say we have irreconcilable differences and, mm -hmm. and leave it that way, especially because they had a son together. Yeah. Yeah. And they both loved the son. And, you know, you were at least removed enough from the situation that you could sort of take that large view. And at the time, he's got Evening Shade, which is a family show. Yeah. And you understood what the impact was going to be based on how he navigated that personal situation. Yeah, we talk about that a lot in this about right is wrong and wrong is right and what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Uh, sometimes whoever's the biggest star is right, whether they're right or wrong. Yeah. If that made any sense. Well, you know, it, <laughs> you know, but I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From, a, from a guy from the Midwest to try to figure out this seems wrong to me mm -hmm. and yet it's right because they're a bigger star. You know, if there's, uh, I, I think one area where Burt really struggled throughout his life, it was that he he would have the good sense and he had a huge heart, but he was also an extremely emotional man. Yes. And when he would, would get worked up or feel passionately about something, sometimes 
he would outwardly uh, behave in a way that that people kind of step back and go, "Whoa, this right. is not you know this is not the guy that we're used to seeing in the in the films and on television, <laughs> right. Mr. Easygoing." But you know, to his credit, he always was uh, he always was enough of a man and had the integrity to admit his mistakes yes, and would. be honest about it and say, "You know what? That I really that was I I shouldn't have done that." And um, as someone who's made my own mistakes throughout life, I thought, you know, good. I mean, it was something you could relate to. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and also understanding that at that point in his career, he's at a point where he's rebuilding. He's been this mega superstar. And you really get an, uh, an idea in this book of what it's like to be this huge, huge box office draw. Number one at box office draw for five years in a row. And then as he transitions into doing this television program... It's a different world for him where all of a sudden there are people that won't take your calls anymore. It doesn't matter how great you were. It's, well, what are you doing now? Right. And that is um, for an actor who is extremely talented and has done so much for others to have a lot of those careers and a lot of those people that you have helped along the way suddenly go silent and turn their back on you is devastating. It's devastating. You know, like I like Brian. Right. But I'm going to like Brian tomorrow when he's a huge star and I'm going to like Brian when he's if he's not. Right. That's just who I am. And I think that's who Bert is. But that's not how Hollywood is. No. And it's really, really disappointing to see because I remember when Bert was not hot going to auditions and people mocking him. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't I I didn't like it. And I let him know I didn't like it. What did the centerfold for Cosmo do for him? You know, he didn't like it yeah. um, after the fact. He he just really thought it was a mistake. Um, it, so that was one of his regrets. It was a that. it was a regret, but you know, he was I on think, the rise at that point in time. Though I mean, and making the appearances on the Tonight Show, and so you know, people were connecting with the fact that he didn't take himself seriously. I I, I don't think it was. I, I don't think he should have regretted it because um, I think. You know, I think he looks at, had he not have done that, he would have been nominated for award in Deliverance. He Mm. was great in Deliverance. He was terrific in Deliverance, and no one's going to take that away. Mm. I think he has the Tom Cruise syndrome. Is Tom Cruise is so good looking and so rich and so powerful, we don't have to give him an award. Mm. But he should have won some awards, like in Rain Man and other things. Well, you know, he talked about terms of endearment and his regrets about turning that down. And, um, you know, the thing that I always thought is he could have turned in the exact same performance that Jack turned in, but he still wouldn't have won the Oscar. Hollywood never would have given it. To him, I you agree. Know? I agree. You have these blockbuster films, and to an extent, it's a double-edged sword because it makes you this huge, huge star, and there's the money that comes with it, and the notoriety, and you have a lot right. of power. But it overshadows a lot of the really great work that you do. It does and even to this day, people identify him with. You know, he was good about mentioning Deliverance, but they identify him with the car pictures, Smoking the yep. Bandit, and Cannonball Run. But you know, he did films like Best Friends, right? Phenomenal film, one of my absolute favorites. Me too. Phenomenal talented director. He did a movie called The End, which... Oh, with Dom DeLuise. Yeah. So yes. funny. That, that's actually my favorite well, it movie. It is one he, of my favorites, too, and did. it was on just a few nights ago, and mm-hmm. it is ju- it just still... I love that movie. Yeah, I mean, a great... But he and Dom DeLuise, I thought, though, were they were the best of friends, right? They, they and, were. And, and you could see that on screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could just feel that. They, they were so great together, and the fact that he directed a dark piece like that, yeah. that was had comedy and heart and all these great actors in it yeah he just could do it all he could you know and i mean as a uh, director i mean i think he really showed his stuff with sharky's machine yes and uh (laughs) when i had the opportunity to speak with him i I remember telling him that i really felt like he was the the spencer tracy of his generation Mm -hmm. you know he really had he had become an an expert and was so skilled at making things look easy but he did have a lot of range and when he did best friends when he did starting over he really showed a a vulnerability he was brilliant with comedy Uh, a a lot of those films that he made along the way it seemed like he almost had a strategy of well make a commercial film and then make make something that's a little bit more personal and stretches you as an actor but when you have these films that are the blockbusters that what that's what gets all the attention and that's what Hollywood wants you to continue making yeah and that that is such a difficult thing for an actor to know because you have your agents who want to do the blockbusters. Mm-hmm. You have yourself as who wants to be an artist. You know, you have so many different voices telling you what to do. Yeah. And when those rumors came out that he had AIDS, yes. which were completely false, and he lost all that weight because he had TMJ. Yeah. 
from his accident on City Heat, I think he felt like, no, I got to come out strong and show people. And so he did about five badass films, you know, right in a row. He had this accident on City Heat. And he's really, he's at the peak of his career. He's finally going to have an opportunity to work with his buddy Clint Eastwood, two guys who are at the height of their game. Yeah. And he's uh, in a fight scene. Stunt uh, man is supposed to pick up a balsa wood chair and instead picks up a steel chair cracks him on the side of the head, uh, shatters his jaw, just destroys it. He goes down, and Burt, being who he was, continued to work through the pain when he probably should have just said, you know, we got to shut the picture down. He toughed it out, uh, and then that took him into two years of absolute hell with his health. It did. And in the meantime, you know, he was at a crucial point in his career, and here he can't work. Yeah. And, you know, I, he finished uh, another film, uh, Stick, but at that point in time, he's not really 100% on top of his game. So he goes through that period of struggle, and then the AIDS rumors happen. And that, to me, was such a defining point in his career. As I look back, I go, you know what? It was a different man who came back after that accident. It was a different Burt Reynolds. Right. Because he had seen the worst of the business. He had seen all these people that he had helped along the way that weren't there for him. Yes, and now the public, to an extent, is turning on him as well. Imagine you're a legitimate tough guy, but you're funny, you do all these things, and, and now you're reading in every tabloid that you have AIDS, mm. and you know you don't. Yeah. And people are advising you, you should distance yourself from your gay friends. Yeah. And he's going, I'm not going to do that. Yep. You know, so what I'll do is I'll overcompensate and beat everybody up in movies yeah. and show how bad I, and tough yeah. I am. And I, you know... Certain movies like Sharky's Machine, he was brilliant, but he was also vulnerable yes. in those as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think like anybody, you're going to push a little bit harder to show, hey, I'm I'm good. I'm healthy. Look at me. Yeah. I'm viable. And I think it was almost when he did Evening Shade that he showed his diversity and, and was rediscovered. Yes. And, you know, uh, to Bert's character, it really showed who he was as a man. That was something that really cost him so much in his career. It changed the course of his entire life. To this day, I have no idea who that stuntman was. Yeah. I never once heard him out that man. You know, he he made comments about what a bonehead he was. Right. But, um, you know, I to this day, we have no idea who really uh, caused him that injury. It says a lot about, about Burton, about his character. Yeah. Uh, and even, you know, as Hollywood was was making things difficult for him, you know, as he was doing uh, BL Stryker down in Florida, he still continued to pour into people. A lot of people don't know. Michael Chiklis, star of The Shield yeah. and The Commish, um, he had been blackballed from Hollywood at one point because he starred as John Belushi in the film Wired. And there was basically, Hollywood said anyone involved with this, they wanted blackballed from the industry because the family had come out right. against this this film. It was Burt Reynolds who resurrected Michael Chiklis' career yep. oh, wow. because he cast him on BL Striker, and that led to a role on Miami Vice, and then he was able to start getting auditions again and rebuild his career. And none of that would have happened had Burt not opened that door. I love this guy. Brian, you know what you're talking <laughs> about. And he did that for Robert Urich. Yeah. He, you know, he did it for Farrah Fawcett. You mm-hmm. know, everybody knew her from Charlie's Angels, but she, she's not a real actress. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah. And, and even folks who had been big stars and worked alongside him in, in films, when they were going through periods where they needed help, I mean, Mike Henry, there's a great example of, of someone who really, right. you know, I played Junior, for, for those who right. don't know, and Smokey and the Bandit, and uh, unfortunately now is, is struggling with some health problems, but even back then, I, I think, was was struggling and and uh, certainly on the on the financial side everyone thinks if you're in a movie that you just all of a sudden you're rich right. doesn't work that way right no mike <laughs> mike was on our final season our final two seasons of evening shade and it was a pure love and friendship that bert had of him it says everybody matters yeah and bert did that in jupiter he did that in hollywood he did it everywhere and he would always find a place for people that he cared about yeah and um Mike was a real, Mike's a really good guy. So uh, take me back into your journey and your career and working with Evening Shade. You yep. had been Bert's assistant had worked as a production assistant. Yep. And then you have the opportunity to work as a writer at the same time that your acting career is taking off yeah. outside of the show. Yeah. Bert always would challenge people and w- he, he knew your potential more than you knew yourself. Mm-hmm. So there was a time where um, we were writing scenes and, and, in um, 
Charles Nelson Riley's class. Yeah. And he, he called me up and said, Hey, I, I heard you got a play. I want you to do it in my theater. I said, Oh my gosh, I'd be honored. When do you want to do it? He said, next week. Hmm. And I was like, man, you, you can't do a published play in a week, more or less one that's not written, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that to him out loud. Uh -huh. So the, all those thoughts were going in my head and then boom, I said, okay, we'll do it. And I told my writing partner, I go, are you crazy, man? We can't do this. <laughs> and sure enough, we did it. And that showed that Burt invested in us. Mm -hmm. We pulled it off. And then he said, hey, I want you to rewrite my movie with Reba McIntyre. Wow. So we did that. Wow. And then in the middle of that, he goes, hey, if you can get me an Evening Shade episode by tomorrow, I think I can get you to write on the show. And so literally we pulled an all-nighter, wow. did that, and he goes, yep, you're good. And so now I'm writing on his show, and I can't believe it. I mean, he gave me my equity card, he gave me my Writer's Guild card, and I'm writing for Burt Reynolds. And another person he invested in, his name was Tommy Thompson, uh -huh. is now the executive producer of Sequest with Steven Spielberg. Yes. And so... Tommy is a friend of mine and hired me to act on Sequest. So I said, Bert, you're my priority because you took me to the dance here. So you yeah. tell me, I won't do it if you don't want me to. He goes, no, don't. Are you kidding me? He goes, I want you to do it both. I go, what about CBS? He goes, don't worry about CBS. I go, what about Spielberg? He goes, yeah. and he calls him right there. Yeah. And when he got off the phone with Spielberg, he goes, it's done. You're good. I, I started crying. Yeah. And I get emotional this day. Yeah. Thinking about it because I said, why did you do, why are you doing all this for me? He goes, because Jimmy Stewart did it for me and I want you to do it for other people. Yeah. Jimmy Stewart did it for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. and this, I, I want to just mention, this is Mark Fosser, by the way, actor, director, screenwriter. He's got a new book. It's called Because of Bert. And it is brand new, right? Brand new. Uh, it, it came out on his birthday, February 11th. Brian, you mentioned what um, what was going through your mind and how you dealt with the word when it came down last year that he had passed away. It was just last year, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. And for you, Mark, how did you get word? I was actually doing a show. Uh, it was a Thursday night. And... All of a sudden, my phone started lighting up, and I was getting calls and texts, and, and and I was just devastated. Like Brian, I I didn't see it coming. He was, mm -hmm. and and I I really wanted to fold up the tent, and as if I if, as if Bert was right there, I could hear him say, "You putts, I taught you better <laughs> than this. You know that. Now the show goes on. We'll deal with this later." And it and I started almost laughing, because I could just feel them and hear them saying that. And then it, the show was great and I went home that night and I just bawled my eyes out. Yeah. And I started writing things cathartically on Facebook and people said, you ought to write a book. And I never thought about writing a book, but I thought, you know, I, I'm gonna make a spiritual deal with Bert that I'm gonna get this done by his birthday and I did. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Awesome. Was were there? I didn't ever know. Were there funeral? Uh, was there a funeral service? Was there something for him? There was a funeral, um, and I think we were all devastated down there. But uh, there was a funeral in Jupiter, and okay. it was in Jupiter. Yeah, and I went down, and then the next day there was like a little private ceremony. But I don't think you know personally. I, I think we failed. I think mm -hmm. we failed him. I don't think you know. The, I think yeah. it should have been bigger because yeah. what he's done economically, the economic development he's done for Jupiter, it was a backwoods town that yeah. Bert would talk Tiny. about on The Tonight Show with such affection. And now it's a thriving community because of Bert Reynolds. Continuing our conversation with Mark Fowler, he's the author of Because of Bert. Let's um, kind of wrap up here with Evening Shade. Yeah. You're there at a, at a point in time that was really crucial in the show uh, because you're in the, the fourth season. And for those who, who don't really know, you have to have a certain number of episodes in order to really sell into syndication. Right. So that fifth year was really crucial. And it was also a point in time where Bert's going through a lot in his personal life. The public, to a certain extent, is turning away from the show because of how things were playing out between he and Lonnie. Mm -hmm. And so at a time when it was really crucial they have that fifth year, he's also having a battle with the writer of the program and the executive producer, right? Yeah, or am I yeah, incorrect? Yeah, yeah they, 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 yes. Okay. Now, they, they were Harry and Linda and uh, Thomason, mm -hmm. and, but they were really involved in helping Bill Clinton become president. Yeah. So they kind of left uh -huh. in a way. 
and um, abandoned the show to an extent. Well, yeah. I mean, th- there was a creative differences that I think there. There's a story I talk about where it was a crucial time where I was trying to, you know, get out of. I, I was stupid or not. I don't know. But I, I went out of my lane to tell Bert, you know, you said some great things, but she said some great things and he looked like he was going to kick my butt. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if we don't solve it now, I said, sir, you taught me to be a leader and, and I'm, I'm saying we need you two to be our leaders. Yeah. And if you don't get on the same page, we're, we're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. And um, it, 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 they didn't. And I, and I, I do think well, that, but, the, but you, I mean, let, let's finish that up because yep. you talk about in the book, how I, he, he had the sense to listen to that and, and you could really tell that, okay, he was taking it in. And in that moment, the way Hollywood works, people start coming in the door. Yes, that's right. I, I knew I connected with him. I knew he knew what I said was right. And he said it was, yeah. but then all of a sudden 13 people came in that door and said, I heard what that bitch said, and, you know, yeah. and, they, and they, and all of a sudden, uh, here's the dilemma. What do you do when you love 13 people that tell you one thing and you love one guy who tells you the other, mm. the numbers don't lie. You're probably going to want to pick the 13 people, Yeah. but all those people took him to the cliff mm-hmm. and said, thanks for the ride. And then when he crashed, I was down there picking it up. Yeah. And when you write about uh, the journey with fame and, and at the beginning you talk about how you, you eventually became terrified of fame. Yeah. And I thought, boy, you really gave such a, a, a great understanding to the reader of what it's like and how it is so difficult at that point to decipher the truth. Yeah. It's, it, that To me, that's the biggest fear because there's your stalkers, there's your predators, there's... To not know what the truth is yeah. is so frightening to me. Yeah, because you know, I love living in the truth. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, that's that's all I know. Yeah, you know, and so um, I, I felt so bad for him because I I I thought if I was in those same shoes, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I, I would be worse than he. He handled it really well, mm-hmm. but I knew I couldn't handle it that good. Yeah. When the uh, show came to an end, you were also at a crucial point in your career, and you also, uh, now you're a little bit older, you're established, but you also have a growing family. Yeah. And, you know, it was it was fascinating to me, and, and I boy, could I relate to your journey, because here you've had these wonderful successes, and, and you know, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, Billy Bob Thornton as well, because it, it turns out, you know, you go through a period where you're down, and you think, you know what, maybe this is what, this is all I've, I've got, and, right. and your your wife, who was from Marion, Indiana, is saying, you know what, maybe it's time for us to move back to the Midwest, and, and you're kind of, you're on that bubble, and you're trying to figure out, well, what way do I... I ultimately go you do move back to the midwest which we're so grateful for and and that community should oh, really be you. grateful for as well um but then all of a sudden your career all of a sudden goes into a new stage and you have phenomenal success while you're based in the midwest much bigger actually yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, it was it was amazing because it was like you have a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other and you're not sure which one's which uh-huh. should i leave la or not and the last few weeks, I was acting on a show called Models Inc. The last night in town, I was acting on Coach. Yeah, Jerry Van Dyke had an uncle that lived in Marion, Indiana, and was telling me about it. Yeah. And I'm literally on the set, and back then we didn't have cell phones, so I get a call on the set of Universal Studios that I just sold my first movie, The Right to Remain Silent, which wouldn't have happened. It was all because of Bert right. from the class, right? Yeah. So now we're gonna make this movie, but I'm still moving. So I moved to Marion, Indiana, and I know we're going to make a movie, Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to dig into my savings, so I started washing cars late at night, Yes, and it was so depressing, but I was so grateful. I I say this, but my father-in-law owned a car dealership, and it was the only thing I could do. I wasn't going to go into full-time sales or anything like that, so I'm grateful that I had the job, Mm -hmm. but imagine you have a college degree, imagine you're writing on a top 10 TV show, Yeah. And now you're washing cars. Yeah. And, and I'll never forget when I came home one night and we turned on the TV and we won a cable ace award. Yeah. And I'm, I start crying because I felt like such a loser. And, yeah. But then because of Bert, I met Billy Bob Thornton. And Billy Bob Thornton wasn't really Billy Bob Thornton yet. Yeah. And then he goes, hey, I got this idea about writing a redneck version of Bob Carroll, Ted Nelson. I go, well, I'm living in Mo- Marion, Indiana. I can write that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And so we, we turned in the script and 
man, just literally the next day, he says, I think I can sell it. And all of a sudden, Sling Blade comes out. He wins an Academy Award. Oh, and man. we sell it. And I get a huge agent. And our careers just completely explode. Just, yeah, you they know, just take off. Take off. And, uh, you know, one of many films that you managed to, to get done and get produced. Right. And, and based out of the Midwest. Yeah. It was, it was su- such an unbelievable time where I would, you know... And you know this, being an artist, and you have to be very self-disciplined. Yeah. But you know, having now a powerhouse agent get you through the doors and mm-hmm. going, okay, now Miramax wants you to rewrite this movie. Now they want you to come in to pitch, you know, the the movie um, Masterminds uh-huh. that was ours originally was Zach Galifianakis. Really? Yeah, that's Hillbilly Heist. So we were the original writers on that. So we got a great check for that. Yeah. And you know. Um, it, it was just phenomenal. Huh? Well, you know, when I read in the book about, uh, you know, just what you were, I, I knew what you were feeling in that moment, washing those cars because yeah. I had had that experience, um, you know, really uh, twice because I had had an internship in Los Angeles and, and came back and then went back out and was there for 15 years. And I remember thinking that, you know, you come back and it's, well, you got to do something. Right. And so, you know, I was bartending and I remember thinking, my goodness, you know, all these places that I've been and here I, I I could look I could get online with my phone and see where I've been in these these big films and I've been in, in these Netflix and I and I can see myself on screen I know that I've been on these sets and now here I'm back in Indiana and I'm serving up drinks to people right you know and and trying to make tips it is a humbling experience you know and it's um it, it can be a really tough pill to swallow it it humbles you humbles big uh, time. you know and it it certainly refocuses you but it is it's a tough journey along the way and and that's why so many talented people don't make it because it is just such a personal and an emotional struggle it is and you've made a choice you value your family yeah i i made a choice my family is the most important thing to me now i i kind of made a deal with my wife early on that you'll never take me away from this business because I've, I've known that longer than I knew her, Yeah, but that business will never take me away from you. Yeah. Well, um, she didn't take me away from the business. I, I, I did the right move for our family, yeah. you know, and, and I'm, I'm grateful we did because Indiana has been phenomenal to me mm. and the Midwest has always been great to me and I love the people there, but to be able to spend, you know, months, you know, a month or two at a time out in LA and continue to work yeah. has been unbelievable. It just was a great thing to be able to, to interact with my creative friends and sell things and then come back home and raise my kids has been great. Well, and at a certain point in time, you make the decision to do something. I, I thought it was really interesting because in a way you, you did something similar to what Burt Reynolds had done. You decided, you know what, I'm going to invest in the community where I live. There are talented people here who need an opportunity. They need the training. They need the exposure. So talk about what you have done up there in uh, in Marion, Indiana for the arts, because this is phenomenal. This is so exciting. I really me. appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it goes back to that story we talked about with Burt Reynolds saying, you know, um, Jimmy Stewart helped me and someday I want you to help other people. And I was in a place financially where I could Mm. and my wife was totally supportive of it. And I was asked by several people in the community and I felt like if I'm gonna live here and raise my kids here, I better do something because I don't wanna be a complainer. I gotta be a doer to make a difference. And I saw tremendous talent there and so I, I, got on a board that was called the Marion Community School of the Arts. And I took a year off of work and I just worked really hard to build it up. And I asked Billy Bob Thornton to do a commercial for me. I want to tell you a f- cool story about Billy Bob. Please. He was offered a movie. I, I, a friend of mine was doing a movie and it was like for 250 grand for one day. Wow. And I asked him about that. And I also asked him if he would be so kind to do a public service announcement for my not-for-profit Marion Community School of the Arts. And he goes, I'm not going to do the movie, but I'll do your commercial for you. Wow. So he turned out 250 grand for one day, but was willing to do that. That just tells you what a great guy is. But Jim Caviezel did it. Kelly Ripa did it. We built this really amazing school in Marion, Indiana, where it was acting and singing and dancing and painting and ceramics and culinary. And at the time I had all the different martial arts. Yeah. And um, it was this little engine that could that built up and became an economic development 
story in the downtown of Marion, Indiana. You know, you were so blessed in your career, too, that, I mean, obviously, Burt Reynolds is an extraordinary person, but Jim Caviezel, a beautiful human being. Yes. Billy Bob Thornton, Thornton a wonderful human being. Yep. Um, I was fortunate. I had a, an opportunity to work on Goliath. And one thing I remember about uh, being on that set was that, uh, man, there, there, was no, uh, there was no attitude of stardom there. You know, he would just, he would sit out in a, in a lounge chair, you know, and he'd talk with everybody there and eat with the crew. I mean, just a good guy. Genuinely good good guy yeah both, both of them were I, I i went to uh la when my writing partner passed away last year and i stayed at jim's house and so jim and i went there and to the the memorial with yeah. and billy bob was there and billy and i talked and billy spoke on my partner's behalf i did as well and they're just great guys yeah really really great but go you know going back to the marion community school of the arts one of the things I did in a very small way, not compared to what Burt Reynolds did in a huge way, was try to bring talent from L.A. and New York. Mm -hmm. So, again, with a theme that Burt always had is that everybody matters. Yeah. So whether I, I worked with special needs students mm -hmm. or whether they were top of the line, you know, major talented kids or kids that just needed confidence, yeah. you know, or shy kids that needed to come out of their shell. That was kind of our goal. And so when we'd bring stars to town, it was so good for the self-esteem of the community. So the greatest joy I had was to bring Bert into yes. town to say, kind of see what you did indirectly. You yeah. kind of built this place, my man. Yeah. And he wrote the most beautiful letter that I have in the book about how much he loved our community mm -hmm. and how welcomed he felt. And um, he did a show and then he also taught a class and we built an endowment. And so now every year, kids get free scholarships with Burt Reynolds' name on it. They're Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Continuing to pay it forward. That's what it's all about in life. Really, I, I'm so impressed with your journey and, and just having an opportunity to meet you. Just tremendous respect for you and, and hearing your journey and the decisions that you made along the way and staying grounded and staying rooted. And I have to believe that uh, so much of that came from not only who you are as a human being, but also having the opportunity to, to be around Burton and, and uh, have his influence on your life as well. Thank you. Um, so, um, so what are you working on now, and uh, you know, what does the future look like for oh, you? Thanks for asking. I'm I'm doing a musical uh, with my friend Todd Sasuarda about James Dean. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. It's it's seen through the eyes of his guardian angel. So you go, well, that's kind of funny because he didn't live very long, yeah. and that's part of the whole spoof. So we kind of envision Melissa McCarthy as his guardian oh, angel. Cool. So she's really this clumsy person who's had to wait this many years mm. to tell the story of why things happened the way they did. Oh. So it's she's this clumsy, funny, heartfelt person. But if you know James Dean's story, and I know you're a fan, mm -hmm. um, he's got a tremendous story. Yeah. And he has stood the test of time. He only did three movies, but boy, there are great actors that pass away mm -hmm. that aren't going to be remembered. But James Dean is remembered and it's remembered for a reason. We talk about it in that movie and the music that my, my partner did is gorgeous. We're recording it now. Oh, wonderful. And so the script's ready and done and when the music's done, we'll submit it and see where it goes. Fantastic. And I want you to keep us posted as well so we can support it and, Thank uh, you. and continue to invest in uh, in our own community as well. Mark, uh, I can't tell you what a tremendous treat it has been for me to have an opportunity to speak with you and what a wonderfully beautiful book Because of Bird is. And um, as I said uh, earlier in the interview, I really I encourage everyone to pick up this book make the purchase it's a great read i actually i you know i read it actually in a day i just sat down and really thoroughly enjoyed it if you're a fan of burt reynolds but also if you are someone who has a, a passion for the arts or someone who's interested in uh, in pursuing a career in the arts or you know someone who does uh this is this is a great book i, I mean, it really gives you a truthful and honest understanding of what that journey is about and really uh, the the kind of character that it takes to to have that kind of a career and have uh, the kind of sustained success that you've had, Mark. So. Brian, I'm signing you as my new publicist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, man, I'm telling you, your enthusiasm and your heart is just absolutely extraordinary. I, I need more Brian's in my life. Well, I really do. I thank you for recognizing it because it was done for my heart. Yeah. And as a teacher, I really want to protect the kids and the parents that, that send their kids out in that world. I want them to hold on to their character and not get caught up in 
that that craziness um, because you, we lose a lot of talented people in that world because it gets so crazy. And if you have a good foundation, a good character, you, you can do well. Absolutely.